This is a prime example of why you uh, want to have a level campsite. Unfortunately, with the wind yesterday, I had to take as level as we could get. But the good news is, so everybody ends up on the downhill side of the of the tent by the end of the night. Good news is, if it's cold out, we have very little chance of freezing to death with these two. Okay. Everything packed up. Looks like the dogs are ready to go. Now 8:15. I'm gonna click in my tracker to find out how far we're going. We know the river's about three miles. <clears throat> Ooh, way up there, ready to go already. Uh, um, you also may have noticed wardrobe change. Switch to these Broga pants. Uh, what I figured out from this first few segments is because I'm doing so much pushing, running beside. Um, this track's about a track and a half. The fat bike and me pushing beside it runs me off the track and can scratch all hell. Also, it's a little cooler now, so yeah. Uh, Broga pants it is. Alright, let's get moving. Ready? This little uphill to start things off. Alright, let's go, fine. Still be here.
Look at that. It's an established trail. <laughs> See her ripping down there in the bottom. She's turning around going, hey, where are you guys? <laughs> oh, we're about a mile and a half behind. <laughs> Well, as you can probably see, we've made it to the river crossing here. One of just a couple. Um, Corey, come on, let's see if we can get you what. Come on, let's go. Good girl, go, go. Good girl. So I'm using the dog here. The depth of the river because they can swim. Um, so, the river's pretty shallow right now. Looks like it's only about a foot, foot and a half. Um, so, yeah, we know we're going to get wet. The goal is to uh, kind of limit that wet. So, I'm going to go ahead and take my socks off. <laughs> and, uh, um, I'm going to put my shoes back on because I can't afford to. Um, cut a foot or something out here so I'm just gonna try and keep my socks dry put my uh, shoes back on I know they're gonna get soaked um, and really we've kind of planned this out to get here at this time just because we're gonna camp on the far side of the river and dry everything out after we get soaked so the goal was to try and get across in one piece um, and not tip anything over lose anything in the river uh, or get overly soaked uh, so we'll see how it goes River crossing. Unfortunately, Rio uh, found some of that wonderful quicksand right before we crossed. So she got coated in mud and then she found birds to throw into the quicksand. So, uh, yeah, not super pleased with that portion of the river crossing, uh, but pretty happy that we got across in one piece. Feet are a little cold now because I've had to wash her off. Uh, now she's standing on my jacket soaking it, so, um, yeah, bird dog problems. Um, but we're just going to go up here a little ways, uh, get away from the quicksand and the burrs, and find a place to camp. This looks like pheasant country down here. All right, well, you can kind of see we're going into setup mode. It's just 10.30 this morning, so we're still pretty early. Um, looks like there is some weather blowing in, so... We want to get shelter set up, obviously. Hopefully it kind of skips past us, that'd be nice. Um, because we could use some sun for some power. But uh, got a tent set up, kind of set up in this nice broom grass. Uh, be a good contrast to last night where we were uh, fighting with non-level and everything else. Good news is this whole bottom looks like it would be good hunting. We just need that to kind of stay away from us for a little while. But we've got all day. 
we'll get finished setting up. I'm going to uh, get the uh, tent set up uh, completely, and uh, as you can see, the dogs are already resting. So we'll see what happens here later today. All right. You guys want to go try and add some meat to the pot tonight? Let's go. Run to my beer. Still pretty breezy, but about 3.30. We're going to hunt this river bottom a little bit. This looks like a good spot for a rooster. We'll see. Let's go. find another hole to fall into not really fall climb into and so we had to bring her back down to the river to wash her off again now she's standing in some more burrs not a good start Rio let's get the heck out of here let's call it different Best time I've had in here, but I had to get out of that stuff down there because it's going to be a bad cycle of wash Rio, deburr Rio. Not the best cycle. If she weren't sleeping in the tent with me, it wouldn't make that big of a difference. But if that gluey mud sticks on her and dries, it's just hell. be like wearing a plaster cast. So, we're gonna go out in these blossoms, Dad. Maybe we can take off the sharp one up here. The race is on. Sharp tail just flushed. Downwind. Went around the corner. So what we're gonna try and do is come over the top. Wind is variable right now, but we're racing. We're going to get soaked if we don't get up here in the time. So, here we go. Good girl. Good job, guys. I keep throwing away the first shot. Good job, Rio. Nice pin. Really nice bird. Beautiful bird. Good job, guys. Well, we can add to dinner now. Nope, nope, my bird now. My bird now. So they're called sharp tails because they got these pointy tails, and we call these their sharps, which are the two 
you can tell whether the female male or female from this this is a older bird longer sharps no uh blood in the quills which means this is a second year bird up there all by itself Great job, guys. stays to the south of us. We do have some clear skies out here. But, uh, whew, that looks a little mean out that way. This is this opportunity to talk to you about the anatomies of birds uh, and cleaning birds for the can. So obviously we don't have any refrigeration out here, which means we have to eat these birds the day or within hours after we actually shoot them, which is good to be hunting in the evening and we're at a calorie deficit, so that's gonna be great. All birds are basically set up the same way and once you know how to clean one, depending on scale, you pretty much know how to clean them all. But I'm gonna show you how we clean this bird for camp. Uh, really good sized bird, looks like a male. So we're gonna turn the bird right side up towards us, right? Also, we don't have any plastic bags, so we're using a spare dog food bag as our clean place, although we've got plenty of mat uh, down grass. So you're going to feel on these birds when you have them breast side up, you're going to feel the breastbone right here. You can feel it. You can run your fingers on it. That's the breastbone right there. So with minimal water, what, with the way we're going to clean these birds here, I'm just going to go ahead and make an incision in the breastbone uh, in the skin right there. You're going to see I can just start peeling back. So this is literally within uh, maybe, I'd call it an hour, probably less than an hour. Didn't get through the skin. Mature bird. All right, so you can see right there, we're just gonna peel that back. And what that reveals for you as you can see very clearly, is the breast of this bird. If we want to look, we can see what the bird's been eating because right there is its crop. But what we're going to do, because it might storm again on us, is we're going to go ahead and peel back the legs too. So I'm just going to turn around and I'm going to make a cut in the skin going back down the leg so that I can peel the leg back. Now, the reason we're doing everything like this is because, again, we have minimal water and so don't have the luxury of washing this bird out. Um, we won't have another water stop until about four miles later tomorrow. So I've got one leg peeled back and go ahead, turn a knife around, make a cut just so that the skin peels back over here. And I've got the other leg out and revealed. Good looking bird. So, if we wanted to know what the bird was eating, we'd pull up its crop. You can kind of see what it's been picking at. The buds off of green stuff, I could ID that probably a little bit better. It's also been kind of in the junipers, it looks like. All right, so now that we've got legs and breasts revealed, the goal of this method is to keep the innards off of the meat as much as possible because we don't have a way to clean that meat out here without using water. Um, and we don't want to use our water to clean birds if we don't have to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a knife. You can see the breastbone right here. I'm going to run the knife right down the right side of the breastbone. like that and if I take the 
point of the knife, come up here to the tip and just run it the whole way down. And then you're just peeling back this breast from the breastplate. Trying to get a nice clean cut, not break into the inside of the animal so that we keep everything clean. And as you can see, dark meat, dark meat bird. There is one sharp tail breast and a friend over here helping me. And I wanna show you the inside because um, as you can see, the innards of this bird is, are through the breastplate and in here. We haven't punctured that membrane. So we've got a clean cut on that bird, no contamination of the meat. We're gonna come back and do the other side, same way. Now you can flip the bird around if you want, or you can use your opposite hand. Same thing, come in right by the breastbone. I'm gonna turn the knife this way, go up towards the top. You get up there right by the wishbone. You just kind of want to take your time with the point of the knife. And the closer you get up there, the better. Um, it would be probably a little bit better to actually let this bird rest a tad bit longer because it's still really warm. So it makes uh, cleaning it it'd be nice if the meat was a little more rigid. But here we go. Same way. You can kind of see what I'm doing and I cut it at mine. My helper thinks this is her meal. So there you go. You've got now two clean breasts off this bird. No contamination with the innards of the bird. Everybody has an idea that this is, you know, that um, this is a bloody affair. When you do things this way, it's minimal blood. Um, so my hands are just a little bit bloody from the red of the meat, but really not much blood at all. Stay back. So now what I'm going to show you how to do is, is the thighs and, and legs. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to pop that thigh right out of joint. You can see the socket right there. What I do is I come back in and I take my knife and I run it right along the thigh. Again, right there at the top of where that socket is, you're going to sever those ligaments. And just like this, a little pole and your thigh comes right off. Again, no contamination with the innards of the bird. So just a clean thigh right there. I'll show you the feet in just one second. All right, I'm gonna pop the other side out. This side's been uh, hit a little bit harder, so we'll work to try and make sure we don't contaminate this side. We may actually break the bone on this side just to try and make sure we don't bust into that membrane. Yeah, so I'm gonna break that bone intentionally. I could tell that that leg was broken from the shot. So it's easier to accidentally break into the innards from there. So I just went ahead and broke the bone with the point of the knife. Again, just like that, we've got, with minimal effort, we've got a thigh. Got to clean some more feathers off of this one. So, some of you might be wondering exactly how I'm going to go about preparing this bird. And there are a few ways I've thought about preparing it. But first, I'm going to use the dogs as guinea pigs. So, I'm going to prepare some for their meal. Uh, just the legs and thighs for them, and then I'll save the breasts and I'll show you how I'm going to do those. But the funny part is, is that we've only got one cook pot. It's our cup, our cook pot. Uh, it's everything. We've got a little burner, of course, our utensils. Um, so what I'm going to do for the dog's purposes is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the meat off of the thighs. I'm going to dice it up. And the good thing about this is that dogs don't care if there's a couple feathers in it. Uh, so I haven't washed my hands yet from cleaning the birds. I'll do that before I prepare mine. Dogs have a little bit different rules. So 
So really, I'm just stripping the thigh down. Go ahead and cut it away from the bone. I'm using my plastic wrap as a cutting board again. You go, why didn't you bring a cutting board? Wait, folks, wait. As in, it's heavy. <laughs> and not even that heavy. But as my buddy Alex says, everything weighs something. Um, so we're just gonna cut this thigh away as well. Separate it from the bone. Now, the thing out here with the dogs and actual bones is I'm not a big fan of feeding them uh, bones when we're anytime really, but out here specifically not. If they were to get something lodged in their throat, that would be a no bueno. But what we're able to do is cut most of the meat away from the thigh. And then the legs have a lot of tendon in it, but we'll see what we can deal with there. So I'm just gonna cut this into manageable pieces. And dogs can manage any size piece, quite frankly. So I'm not gonna even be real particular. You may wonder why I'm uh, on my blanket right now. And actually the dog's blanket cutting is, uh, I'm getting ready to fire up the burner and we're in the grassland. So, I want to make sure that we have a barrier between us and the grass uh, for the burner because we don't have open fires out here, although we could. There's no ban right now, but um, let's see if we can get any of the thigh or the leg meat off for him. Probably can. Legs have a lot of tendon in them. We'll take the two biggest chunks out. Can you see that tendon? Again, that's not necessarily the best thing for the dog's gullet, but we've managed to get a good little amount of meat off. And by all means, if you're um, if you are having these birds yourself, it is worth cooking the thighs and legs. Uh, we do that for all our birds. Just running it down across the top of those tendons that are down by the bone. And I'll come back in and I'll cut a little piece of meat off. Same on this side. Go back the other way. I'm able to get a little bit more meat out that way. And again, I'm not being real particular about how this presentation looks because it is for the dogs. And they don't care what it looks like. see one of those tendons right there. Those little suckers are uh, wiry. Okay, so we haven't made too big of a mess of our hands. Luckily it just rained so we can wipe our hands off on the wet grass. It's not that wet because everything dries fast out here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna light our burner up. Take some of the dog water here. Just topped off four liters, but this is for all of tomorrow until we get to our next cash. Trying to dump everything on me. So I just dumped a good amount in there. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sharp tail broth. The dogs so we'll add this to their normal food so I'm just going to drop the cubes of sharp tail meat in the water I'm actually going to drop the bones in they'll help make the broth as well everything's in there I'm sure we got a good stable platform because there is quite a bit of water in there let me show you that up close dogs are going to have a little sharp tail soup that I'm going to add to the normal food. Now that I've got their portion cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and clean the hands up 
and uh, we'll work on my portion. Okay. No, I, 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 not you. So here's their back sealed dog food. I'm just gonna go ahead. I know that this is a day's portion for both dogs. That's why we do it this way. I'm gonna get Ida's portion out here, which is just a cup. I'm gonna do a little bit more. And here is our brew. Took about two minutes. <laughs> That's a pocket rocket, it's hot. Uh, I already threw the legs and thighs out, so or the bones out, just so that they uh, are out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead, grab her some boiled meat. We only got one bowl for two dogs, so I'm gonna have to split it up. And then I'm gonna pour a little of that broth in and the broth turned out really good. As a matter of fact, looks great. It smells good too. I'm just gonna shake that up a little bit. Give you a look. Looks like, looks like a good dog dinner to me. I even think it looks like a good dog dinner. Hang on, let me see how hot it is. Might be too hot still. Okay. So there you go. We got the uh, we got the approval from Ida on the additives. Okay, fast forward. Dogs have had their dinner, or at least Rio's finishing hers. Um, same pot. Bring it out. I took those breasts and I diced the meat up. Cross grain, of course. Very dark red meat. The reason I did that is so that I could wash my hands one time um, after I got done it. So now that we've got that part done, let's go ahead. We're going to fire up the burner. Now the difference here is, um, of course, I don't have any seasoning, but I would like a little sear on mine. Not generally concerned about the sear for the dogs. Firing up the burner. Immediately hot. And I'm just going to take and put our meat right in. Try and turn that burner down a little bit. going to give it a little sear on the outside. Don't have any oil either, so this is all just a big experiment. Some of you probably go, well, wouldn't it be better to have a skillet? Well, sure. It'd be better to have a full kitchen, as a matter of fact. Gonna put a little sear on that. So you wonder what the next steps are. Well, I've been thinking about that. So everything else we've got out here are dehydrated meals. So I thought how about a little lasagna with meat sauce. I mean, it's got meat in it. So for these dehydrated meals. Watch your flavor pack, of course. Just gonna put a little sear on that meat. And then it says to add 12 fluid ounces of boiling water. Now, for those of you who are wondering, yes, you can serve sharp pale medium rare. It's actually better medium rare. I'm just going to put a little brown on the outside edges of this. It's too much meat at one time, but if you look over my shoulder, you probably can't see over my shoulder. We're racing uh, another storm. So I'm going to try and uh, speed things up a little bit. So 
that's getting a nice bit of brown on there. It smells good. So the other good thing about these dehydrated meals is they have a lot of sodium in them. And so we don't have any seasoning that we're carrying, but these meals have plenty of seasoning in them. No, my sous chef wants back in the game. Come over here and sit. She liked her dinner. Sit. Charge. It's my dinner now. So, ugh. not good. COVID. Just putting a little bit more color on that meat. Ones on the bottom probably stuck. Oh, they didn't stick too bad. A little bit. It's my handy dandy Gerber tongs are for. Give me a little tong action here. Try and get the bottom pieces up and out so the other ones can rotate in. Just like that. Now, we know that this calls for an additional 12 fluid ounces of water. So I figure we get a little color on that meat. Oh, smells good. Then, we're gonna go ahead and add 12 fluid ounces of water. Turn the heat up now. So, yep. Put the boil on. Now the other way we could go about fixing this meat is we could have held a skewer over a over our flame. We might do that next time. But I wanted to try this with the dehydrated meal just to see how it turns out. Okay. Through the miracle of television. We have boiled the water and meat together. So basically we have some sharp tail soup. What? Got our lasagna and meat sauce dehydrated. Bombs away. That's what I say to that. Bombs away. How? I'm gonna go ahead and mix that all up in there. Hang on, let me get one piece just to find out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. How sharp you are, right? Wonderful. Now, you know, with a little bit of marinade, a little bit of TLC, we had some time and sharp tail some of the most tender vittles you'll ever eat. But we mixed it in there with our dehydrated lasagna. Now we got to seal her up and uh, get the noodles cooking. All right. So fast forward. TV magic. Got our second stir. Here we go. A little sharp tail lasagna. Oh my. Yeah. One hot meal of the day.
I'm not sure it gets any better. Leave me. 